Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I am very excited to be kicking off a brand new showcase here on the channel for Aeon Trespass Odyssey from Into the Unknown. After an extremely successful first crowdfunding campaign, this one is coming back in the middle of May on Kickstarter and the description below and pinned comment has the exact date as well as links to that campaign if you're interested. When this video goes live, the campaign will already have gone live or it'll just be on the cusp of beginning. The aim of this showcase is to take you through the learn to play booklet that's included in the core box experience. I'm going to take you through this visually so you can see the whole thing from beginning to end to give you a great idea as to how the game flows and operates for those of you that are still unsure on this one and to also help those that have the game already get rolling that much faster. So let's start things off at the very beginning of this learn to play guide with a tutorial battle setup. We start off with the battle board, which is already on the game table. You'll notice on the outside edges of this game board, it has specific areas for different components, which we'll be placing out as we go through this setup video. This board is where all the battles are going to take place. Now go inside your core box and find the four trauma decks. You'll easily be able to find them based on the backs you can see on screen. And then inside each of these decks, you're going to remove a number of cards for this tutorial battle. Here are a list of each of the cards that are going to come out of each of those corresponding decks. Make sure you remove all of these for the tutorial battle, but be sure to remember to put them back in those decks again after you're done. Next, you're going to go ahead and remove any cycle two only and any cycle three only cards across any of the trauma decks. So in this case, minor trauma, major trauma, and grave trauma all have cycle two only and cycle three only cards. There's a whole bunch of them. It does look like on screen there, there's only one of each, but there's actually a bunch under each pile here. So make sure when you go through them, you're removing all of cycle two and three. Leave the cycle ones inside the deck. At the very top edge of the board, you're going to see an area marked trauma. There will be spots for each of these decks, so place them as depicted on the game board. Next, find all your condition cards. It's worth noting some of these conditions have a back that looks like what you're seeing on screen and other ones will actually have information on both sides and won't have a card back. Place all the condition cards in this condition area. Next up, find a card back that looks like this. Put it next to the minor trauma cards. Next, find your Morrow's deck using the card back you can see on screen here next to your previously placed decks. Now you're going to want to go through the punch boards inside the base box looking specifically for condition tokens that look like this. There are two different kinds you're looking for, the opening tokens and the break tokens. And then place them within easy reach. I place them inside of a game tray. This tray does not come as part of the base game, but it is very handy for keeping your tokens organized. Then go ahead and find your attack dice. These are going to be 10-sided dice in black and white, as well as your power dice, which are D6s in red, white, and black. Now let's go ahead and set up our characters. We're going to start with the Dreamwalker Titan Sheet. We'll have one for each of the four characters we'll be controlling. Each of our characters will also have a portrait card as well as a Triskelion. And on top of that, you're also going to have an Argonaut sheet, but this sheet is printed. It's worth noting, though, there is an app for this game that takes care of everything from that printed sheet. So you can just download the app and keep track of what you need to keep track on that sheet inside the app. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Here's a look at another couple characters that have been set up, all in a similar fashion to the first one we did. That's going to do it. Now let's go inside the app and set up each of these characters. Here's a look at the app on my phone. As you can see, the portrait matches the character that I'm talking about and setting up right now. You'll also notice down below here a basic skill of Wisdom 1. That is coming from the selection of the portrait that I've made inside the app. You can even go ahead and set up an Argonaut that's not inside the app and then choose the skill from there. But again, we're going to go with the preset ones here and they match what's on the card. Once you've assigned your four characters inside the app, you'll be able to click on them in order to jump inside to see exactly what their stats are set up as. And you'll see again, Again, per each portrait card, you're going to have a specific ability that's going to be ticked up by one. So expect this across the board from the characters at the beginning of the game. Each one has a differing one. You'll see here one endurance for this character. Over here we have one courage and here we have one will. 
Now going back to the Triskelion for a second here, for each character you have Rage, Fate, and you have Danger. All of them should be set to zero from the start, and because nobody has gained any attributes in these yet, normally at the start of battle, the Titan with the most Rage would gain the priority target token, which is this right here, but because nobody has any Rage, it'll just go off to the side for now. Now you'll go through your core box and find the mini card called Fist, and you're gonna give one to each character. Now let's focus on setting up our enemy we'll be battling against. We're going to find the components for the primordial we're going to be facing. The first thing you need to find is the primordial sheet. You'll also need the corresponding AI deck and BP deck for the primordial you are setting up. You'll see the name to ensure you've got the right one at the bottom on the back of the card. It's worth mentioning inside of each of these decks currently there are stages 1, 2, and 3. What you're going to want to do is go through the AI deck for example, break it out into three separate piles, play stage two and three cards off to the side and leave only the AI stage one cards here and do the exact same in terms of staging for the BP deck as well, placing the additional stage two and three off to the side. Now we're not quite done with the primordial just yet. We also need the signature card for it and the routine card. On the left hand side we have a routine card called Idle Hands, on the right hand side a signature card called Swap, find these and place them. Also you'll notice a bunch of stat rows on the Primordial card, the only one we're focused on during the tutorial battle is level 0. Now we're going to shift our attention to the game board itself, we're going to set it up starting with the Column Terrain card. And that's this card right here, which will be placed way up at the top of the game board. Now you need to head back to your punch boards at this point and find the column tiles. You're going to punch all 16 of them out, and we're going to place them around the game board as it shows on pages 4 and 5 of the Learn to Play guide. With all the column tiles now in place, we're going to move on to putting the Titan miniatures in their designated spaces. There are four different positions to place the four different characters. The Titan miniatures are now ready for battle. It's time to bring the Hecaton miniature into play. With the Hecaton miniature in the middle of the board, notice on it it has a front and a back, which is going to influence its ability to target Titans. At this point, we're going to draw the top card from the Minor Trauma deck. When you reveal the card, ignore everything on it except at the very bottom. In the bottom left-hand corner of the card, you're going to see an arrow and a direction that it's pointing. That's the direction that the Hecaton miniature is going to shift to right now. The miniature now has its front side facing to the right and its back side facing to the left. The trauma card that was used to determine the direction of the Hecaton miniature goes to the bottom of the minor trauma deck at this point, and that's going to do it. You have done everything to set up for the tutorial battle and you are ready to go. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Join me in the next one as we dive into gameplay to show you how a battle within Aeon Trespass Odyssey pans out. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo.